Good morning, guys. We thank you for joining at Hopeland Online on YouTube this morning. We're, you have many channels to pick from, but you picked the right channel. We're so happy you're joining us. And if you're brand new, please text NEW to 323-405-3232. That number again is 323-405-3232. Three, two. That's for all the new people. The old people, you don't need to text us anything. We know who you are. Don't worry about that. So we're excited. We're wrapping up uh, our series this week. Uh, Pastor Sean's going to bring Change Your World. So get ready for that. Get your notebook, get your Bible, get your coffee, get your Cheerios, whatever you need to get into the Word. Get ready this morning. He's going to bring it. What's up, everybody? Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, welcome to Hopeland at Home. And we are about to dive into the Word of God. Um, Crystal Gale and I love you guys. We miss you. And um, we can't wait uh, to gather again uh, soon. And so we're just going to jump right into the Word. We're in the middle of our series right now um, called uh, We Exist. And we're at the last point of our vision. Uh, and it is We Exist uh, so you can change your world. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. Uh, this is a huge part of our vision at Hopeland Church, and we exist as a church, and uh, that you uh, can change your world so that you would change your world. So I'm going to pray uh, before we get into the, uh, the, the Word and the Scripture, but if you want to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we'll start at verse 13, and I'm going to pray and uh uh, I hope that this word just ministers to you and speaks to you today. Uh, Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for everybody uh, joining in and, and, and hearing the word today. And Lord, I pray that uh, you speak to us, uh, you change us, you encourage us, God. And I pray you challenge us to literally and um, actually make a difference in our world. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said, amen. All right, let's do this. Um, if you want to, once again, I'm going to meet you at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Um, but I just want to encourage you today about changing your world and that you were created to change your world. Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons you're here is to change your world. Last week we talked about fulfill your purpose. And now we're going to talk about when you fulfill your purpose, when you fulfill God's purpose, you start to change your world. And so you in and of yourself are not called to change the world, um, but you are accountable to God and to others to change yours. Um, I, I was praying earlier this week and just uh, praying for the world. Uh, we're in a, in a crazy time right now. Um, there's a lot of unrest out there. There's a, just turmoil. It's chaotic um, in our world. Um, and I was praying and it felt overwhelming. And, and God reminded me, um, Sean, you're not called to change the world, but you are called to change yours. And if we all change our world, we are going to change the world. Um, and I think when we talk about changing your world, the, way we, the reason why we want to we wanna share that, the reason why that's a part of our vision and it's very specific is because when we talk about your world in God, it's possible to change your world. When we talk about the world, it's almost like, yeah, I don't know, what's, what, what's, what's the use it's so far gone. It's so, it's getting worse if you could really look at it with natural eyes. But you can change your world. And that's where the accountability and responsibility comes in. See, um, and what we're going to talk about today in respect to changing your world is God has called you to a place, an environment. And there are people in that environment. And God is calling you to do something and to help the people that are in that environment. That's what it means to change your world. I'm going to say it again. We're going to talk about how God has called you to a place. And he is calling you to do something in that place. Um, you know, he is calling you to a specific type of career or, or, or a certain vocation. And God is calling you to change that place. God has put you in a certain family. He has given you a family and, and friends. There's a neighborhood you're in. There's a family you're a part of. And you are called to bring change to that space. Um, and this is for everyone. This is how God changes the world. Is he places you in a place in the world. And he empowers you and graces you to change it. 
we as a church are physically, our physical location is in Los Angeles, in Boyle Heights, on 1516 East 1st Street. We are in this place, in this environment to, to be a part of changing uh, the lives of people through the power of Jesus Christ, okay? So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, we, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. I want you to say this out loud with me. Say, say God has given me a sphere. Uh, say this with me. Say, God has appointed me to a place. All right? I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read verse 13 again. We, however, will not boast beyond measure but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. For we are, verse 14, we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ. Okay? Um, and so what is he talking about? That this, he was talking to this church in Corinth saying, you are part of my sphere. I am called to change my world. This is the Apostle Paul uh, in this space. You are part of our sphere. Uh, you know, he said, our sphere, which especially includes you. This is my first point, is that you are on a divine assignment. Um, everybody that is a Christ follower, that is, uh, um, has confessed Christ, is walking with Jesus, God has placed you on a divine assignment assignment. Um, this is what he did with the Apostle Paul. He gave him a sphere. He gave him a people. He gave him a literal geographical place that he was called to go to and to change, you know, within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us. So you are appointed a sphere, okay? You are, have been given a, a sphere. And I'm going to give you the definition of the word sphere so you can understand. That's what I said. When it comes to change your world, it's where you are. You have a sphere. There is an area God has given you. This is what the word sphere means in the Greek. It means a, a, a definitive uh, boundary or fixed space within the limits of which one's power or influence is confined. And he was saying, look, I'm not going to boast outside my sphere. I'm not going to look at somebody else's assignment and go, man, I wish I could do that. Or I'm not going to look at where somebody else is successful and go, man, I'm not that successful. And he was saying, no, we're not going to boast. Or, or, and, you know, I'm going to say, don't boast um, outside of your sphere. Stay focused on where God has placed you. And, and, and this word also means it means the province assigned to one. That's what it means. That's why I said you are on a divine assignment. The people in your world, the ones that you love, the ones that get on your nerves, the, the ones in your life, the ones that really know you, the ones that don't know you so well, but they're in your world, the ones that you try to avoid sometimes. Um, come on, somebody say amen. The, the ones you're like, oh man, I don't want to really be around that person. But if they're in your sphere, they're in your area, I'm here to tell you right now, they are your divine assignment. And many times you are theirs. And you're like, I'm not trying to be their assignment. What I'm saying is that the people that God has placed, he's set you in, in time and in set boundaries in this life. His sovereignty has placed you. His wisdom, his eternal um, uh, wisdom and, and, and God's um, eternal purpose has designed your existence to be in a certain time and place. And you are on a divine assignment, okay? The word limits, he says, look, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stay within my limits, okay? It means a determined extent, a portion measured to you. And say that when we say, I have a portion, right? Say this with me again, say, I have been given a sphere, all right? So, so you have a sphere, you have influence. And this is what it means, one's sphere of activity. Where you do life, that is your assignment. Where you are now, you are on assignment. In God's wisdom and providence, he positions us in a time and place with people that will receive from us. So you, you have a divine assignment. Um, God doesn't just do things with no sight, foresight, with no plan. Um, you 
are positioned. You are placed specifically. This, this is God's design here. You know, you are even the ethnicity you are because if it's God, it's God's plan. It's his, it's his purpose. You have been placed around the people you've been placed around there. The experience in your life, you got to see it through the lens of God's perspective, which is his sovereign will position you and placing you in, in set time and boundaries and places. And, and this is where, this is where um, change your world first must start is that I am here on an assignment, you know? And if you even look at your life, there, there's a reason um, you've struggled with, you struggle with. There's a reason that things out there that bother you, bother you. There, there's a reason you have had to fight through things you have to fight through. There's a reason maybe some things haven't been so easy for you. You're on an assignment. There's a reason that you've had to persevere through things and you uh, maybe uh, uh, could look outside of your sphere and say, uh, man, uh, I didn't really ask for this 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 hand. You know, I, I used to think about that my, my whole life. Like, why was I dealt this hand of abuse and turmoil and chaos in my home as a child? Why was I victimized as a child? And, and the devil uh, um, tried to destroy me, tried to mess me up. Um, if you look at statistics of even how I grew up, they're not good for people. They don't come out just right. They, I'll be honest with you, many people that grew up the way I grew up, they're incarcerated. Um, or uh, they are, um, uh, uh, they have a lot of um, behavioral health issues, even insanity issues, uh, and and so um, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not even saying I'm above all that. I'm saying that that God's grace brought me through it, but God's going to use it. Every pain, every struggle I went through for His glory. I'm on an assignment, you know. And and another thing too, I noticed in my life, I want you to encourage you that the people you're around, the people you've grown up with, there's a reason. There's a reason God has you in the church he has you in. There's a reason you're around the certain people you are around. I mean, I noticed my whole life, I've always found myself, even from childhood, to be somewhat different than the rest of my family in some way. I'm sure anybody can say that, right? Yeah, I'm different than them. Like, they're crazy, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there really has always been something a little bit different about my journey, and I believe it's the hand of God. Um, and just a, my family, okay? Um, and even as a young kid, I always ended up as a child, I was always connecting to and around other friends and family that were not my ethnicity. Um, I'm not saying I didn't have white friends, but the, the, the journey of my life, I always um, kind of naturally gravitated towards environments that were not, um, did not, people that did not look like me and did not have the same ethnic or, or socioeconomic background. It's just something that was before I even gave my heart to Christ, it just kind of was always happening this way. I mean, even my journey in God, my mentors and leaders, um, you know, were Filipino and Vietnamese and a lot of Hispanic uh, and, and, and blacks that, that really mentored me in the Lord. It's just where I was, time and place, and, um, and I can see why, uh, where I am. Um, and, and the people that God has called me to and the friendships I have, the, and, you know. Um, and so I want to encourage you that there's a reason um, you are where you are and doing what you're doing, okay? Here it is, my next scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. You are our epistle or, or letter written in our hearts. Here's the Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthian church again. Known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ. And as I said, you are on a divine assignment. My next point is this. You are God's love letter to somebody. Your life is a letter of Christ to the world. Your life, your journey with God is what somebody in your sphere will read. And so many times we want people to read the Bible, right? We want the Bible back in schools. Nothing wrong with that. But I think our prayer should be God. Our prayer is that they read us. They read our life. That our life is the living word before them. Our life 
is God's love letter to them. Yeah, we'll get to the word. We're going to get them a Bible. But how about we let them read our life first and let our life be, be a witness of the written word. That this thing isn't just a book. It's just not a religious ritual. This thing isn't just um, a religious practice. This thing is living. This is a living word. And I am that love letter uh, of God to the people in my sphere. Okay? Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us. Written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. That is of the heart. And in the NLT, uh, the New Living Translation, 2 Corinthians 3, 3 says it this way. Uh, clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. And um, you are God's love letter to somebody. You know, and here it is. Um, it's going to take more than prayer to change, the, change your world. Uh, prayer is, um, is, is, is our lifestyle. It's, it's, um, it's, it's our approach toward God. It's, it's the answer to what the world, is, it, what's going on in the world. Um, but um, to change your world, it's going to take more than prayer. To change your world, it's going to take more than your private relationship with God. Although that is the foundation of our walk with God. But it can't just be that. Uh, that, is, that is the flow of our heart toward God. That is the foundation of our life is prayer and intimacy with Jesus. But we're going to get into the, some, some things here and see how somebody in the word changed their world. They didn't change the world but they changed their world. And in changing their world, they changed things for a nation. But it started with one environment, one person stepping up. And this person had a heart after God. He sought the Lord. He was a God pursuer and he was a worshiper. But in this environment, he had to do something in addition to that. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. And I just want to be honest with you. Change your world isn't something cute. Change your world will cost you. Change your world will, will require something of you. Change your world will require sacrifice. Changing your world will, uh, will, will require humility. Changing your world will require you to lay something down. Change your, changing your world will require you to, to let go of your attitude. Changing your world will require you to let go of your past. Changing your world will require you to let go of your excuses. If you want to change your world, it's going to cost you. If you want to change your world, you got, you, you got to choose this. It is, it is on you if you're going to change your world. You can't blame anybody outside of your world and outside of your commitment to it. It's nobody else's fault. It's not your child. It's not the, the, the way you grew up fault. It's not that you were abandoned or done wrong. When you choose Christ, you are now accountable and responsible to change your world. And I'm here to tell you right now, it's worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. And it, there is such value in you to change your world, but it will cost you something. All right, you are on a divine assignment. You have a divine assignment and you are literally uh, God's love letter to somebody. All right, that's what we're talking about. You are called to a place and a people. And uh, now we're, we're just going to talk about what do I do now? I mean, if this is true, if I'm on an assignment and God's sovereignty has placed me in a time and place in, in this world, and just as Esther said, you know, I was born into the kingdom for such a time as this. Um, you know, it was, it was timing. Esther's birth was timing. Her placement was timing. She saved the nation from being killed and slaughtered. She, but it cost her. Uh, you go back and read Esther. The, the, Esther's not in my notes. It's in my spirit right now. But you go back and she had to do something. That's what we're going to talk about. You, 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 you have an assignment. The grace of God's on you. You got the word of the Lord. But are you willing to do in that place what God's leading you to do? To, to change something, um, it's going to cost you. And, and we as a community, a part of our vision is we exist so you can change your world. But we can't change your world for you. This is you. This isn't pastor's responsibility. I, I'm here to just 
to just remind you of what you're armed with, remind you of what God has done for you, remind you, and then you go out and change it. I can't change your world. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't do that for you. That's you. That's your assignment. I, I, can't, I can't fulfill your assignment for you. That's you. You, you, you said yes to Jesus. I can't say yes for you. Um, and so I want to just encourage you in it, that you can do this. You can change something. You could, you could, you could flip the script. You could turn this thing up, upside down. In my family, nobody was serving the Lord. Nobody walking with God. Um, I was, I was, uh, in my, I'm an anomaly. I'm just, I, I, I was different. I was, there was something God, God did to me, and, and I had to be willing to walk through that. Well, coming home as a teenager to an environment that was not, you know, people weren't encouraging me to do my devotionals, right? People weren't, people were tripping that I was at church on Sundays, that, you know, um, and so uh, here it is. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Here's David, right? David, um, uh, the whole um, army of Israel is scared of Goliath, okay? They called him the champion. Um, they, they were fearful of him. They ran from him. And then David is simply delivering some snacks, some cheese to be specific. Um, he's just doing what he's called to do. And uh, he's just going up there to say what's up to all the big dogs, right? He's just a little guy. And... Uh, he shows up, First uh, Samuel seventeen twenty six. Then David spoke to the man um, who stood by him, saying, "What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God?" Okay, here's David. God leads him. God by His Spirit. And the call of God on his life led David into an environment that was not good. God's spirit led him into an environment where it was status quo. And not, not much activity. Uh, stagnant. Fearful. Scared. Um, walked into an environment and everybody's disobedient. <laughs> Anybody ever feel that way? You you're like, man, this place is, there's something wrong with this place. If you ever find yourself in a place and you're like, man, there's something wrong with this. That's why you're there. That is why you're there. God led him there. Okay. Every one of us is in an environment that needs change. Right now, I'm telling you, you are somewhere in place and time. And this place is not right you're in. There's something wrong with it. There's something disturbing about it. And that is why you are there. Every one of us has influence in a place that is now currently status quo. Every last one of us is in an environment that's not where it needs to be. Welcome to your destiny. Welcome to the purpose of God. Welcome to your invitation to change your world. Don't expect God to lead you into an environment that doesn't need some help. He's going to lead you by His Spirit into a place that is broke, busted, and disgusted. That is why you are there. And you might say, God, I can't change this. God, I can't do this. You're right. But with this grace, you can. Uh, you know, God is leading you to a place in your everyday life that needs your voice to change it. David, um, you might say, David wasn't called to go and do that. Right? I mean, naturally speaking, he didn't have any army ar armor on. He wasn't even in the army. He wasn't even part of the army. But God has a habit of putting the most awkward situation together to change something if you find yourself and it might feel awkward where you are that could be an indication that you are in the place God has called you to be it's not going to be comfortable and here's my third point God is calling you to say what others aren't saying you want to change your world you got to say what nobody else is saying then David spoke <laughs> he he started asking questions and he said, for who? Nobody said this. I mean, could you imagine maybe the potential intimidation this boy felt? I mean, he is talking to grown men. And he's saying, basically, can I paraphrase, what y'all doing? Like, look, what's wrong with you people? Like, somebody do something. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. I mean, he came up in there with some spiritual authority. 
right? And, and he, it started. I'm here to tell you, when your language changes according to what God is saying, change has begun. Right now, I, I'm going to tell you right now, when, when David started talking like this, the, the giant already started to fall. It, it was inevitable. But guess what? The, the Bible says that um, God framed the world with his word. And that we, you know, our tongue is a rudder. The Bible says it steers the direction. And when your language changes, your, your future changes. It started with his words, but he had to be willing. He had to be willing, church, to say what nobody else was saying. He was nowhere, nowhere in here does it say he was being rude or brash or demeaning or condemning, but he was saying what nobody else was saying. You are on a divine assignment and you are God's love letter to somebody. Come on now, single ladies. You are a love letter to a man of God. Come on now. I said, single ladies, you are valuable fearfully and wonderfully made, you need to prophesy over yourself. I am a love letter to somebody. Come on, that was a side note. I will receive an offering after the service for that one. All right, here we go. God is calling you to say what others aren't saying. God is leading you to a place um, in your everyday life that requires your voice. Requires your voice. Requires your voice to say what others may not be saying to say what others aren't expecting you to say because it's the word of God for you. It's your assignment. And, and I'm saying even in this culture, this world right now, I personally uh, know that I am on an assignment from God. Um, I'm not that I'm so special. Uh, no, I, everybody, you're on an assignment from God. And very specific for me, I know that as a white man in this world, I am called to challenge my white brothers and sisters with respect to what's going on in culture. And I'm going to say what they might not expect I'm going to say. I'm not condemning or being brash or hurtful. I am white myself. But I feel that is part of, of what I feel from God to do for His glory and for unity in, in, in the body of Christ. And I, I feel an assignment from God to, to, um, to create an environment as a pastor that is um, not in, in, in word only that we love everyone, but that our church represents um, every culture, every ethnicity, that this, this is how we live. I'm, that I don't want to be um, just some white pastor saying something because something blew up on the media. I feel an assignment from God. This is something in our church Part of the fabric of our community is something we talk about race and have been for the last few years. Every year, it is something we purposely bring up into our gatherings. And we'll, I mean, that's just who we are. That is an assignment that I feel on my life. And I am okay if I get any pushback or any um, resistance with that. I'm, I, I, my, our heart behind this is unity. But I'm going to say what others may not be saying. And, 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 and I'm okay with um, the fallout as a result, if need be, um, because um, we uh, are called in Christ to unite the nations. The Bible says that, that his house is a house of prayer for all nations. All right? And so God is calling you to say what others aren't saying. Here, let's go to verse 28. Here we go. Still with David. 1 Samuel 17, verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. All right, stirred up some things. Now look, if you're going to change your world, um, it's going to stir up some things. Um, and you got to be willing to, to deal with that. I mean, Jesus did it. Apostles did it. Disciples did it. I'm not saying that we intentionally do something to cause people to be angry or cause the devil to mad. I'm not trying to say create, you know, self-inflicted persecution. But scripturally, theologically, and I know in actuality, 
that if you want to change your world, you're going to say stuff others ain't saying. And when you say it, it's going to make the devil mad and it's going to, it's going to make people uncomfortable. Here's my next point. Change is uncomfortable. And, and, and if you're not okay with that, if you have a low tolerance for uncomfortable environments because of what you're called to do, um, changing your world is going to be difficult. Okay, so, so, so his brother, this is his brother too. It's his brother. His brother, family. Uh, um, when you obey God, you're not going to make everybody in your family happy. You might make some of them angry. Um, you're not trying to make them angry. Lord, help us that we don't intentionally do that. Lord, help us that it's not our flesh doing that. Lord, help us that it's not some religious thing doing that. But, but, but when you do what is right, it's going to cost you. It's a prayer I pray over my kids all the time. Lord, give Dominico and Giovanna the strength to do what's right even when it's hard, because doing right is hard sometimes. Doing right is going to cause a commotion sometimes. Doing what's right is going to stir up some things. We're not trying to stir up things, but you do what's right, and things don't get stirred up. Jesus walked in the temple, started tipping tables over. Peter looked at him and said, man, zeal for his house has consumed him. The, 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 I'm talking about change your world. We're not talking about blend in and just fit in with everything and everybody, but, but in the gospel, Walking with God, you got to be okay and comfortable when uncomfortable happens. Uh, why did you come here? There we go. Why are you here? Like I said before, God gave you an assignment and the devil's going to speak to you on your assignment. Say, why are you here? You don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here. You're messing stuff up. We're comfortable here. The, the Goliath isn't even doing anything to us. We're, you know, like, like you're, you're stern thing. You're going to make him mad. You're going to make the devil mad. Why are you here? Questioning his placement by God. His brother. Think about the context. This is his blood brother looking at him, questioning where God put him, questioning his purpose, questioning the next place of his destiny. Question, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? You're doing your little thing over there. You're supposed to be over there doing small stuff. What are you doing here? I know your pride. Now, now here come accusations. The Bible says the, the devil, Satan, is the accuser of the brethren. Uh, I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. It's like, man, this is pride. Think, think about in the spirit of, uh, and God's perspective. God's like, I have my son positioned to give a breakthrough to a nation. And, and the people on the team were saying, what are you doing here? Get out of here. You're here because you're questioning his heart, his motive. All right, expect, here it is. Expect resistance from unexpected sources. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. See, I'm just saying that's just the reality of obedience. You got to expect resistance from unexpected sources. Um, that's just part of changing your world. David wasn't changing the world, but David was changing his. Okay? If, if you're going to change something, you're going to have to learn to deal with accusations and, and navigate them and, and, and stay and not get thrown off, not get caught up in the flesh. Not bite back, not, not clap back. Come on now. I know, I know some people that, you know, when they get threatened or, or, or people accuse them, they clap back. And I'll be honest with you, um, um, I have not had the best of self-control and patience in this area. All right? So I understand wanting to defend. And, and, and even sometimes, here we go, I'm going to share this with you real quick here, is um, sometimes we're doing what is right but the devil triggers our flesh in, in, the, in the rollout of our mouth and our attitude are now wrong. And sometimes our wrong attitude and reaction can disqualify the right we're doing in the environment God has called us to change. Okay, guys, uh, you are on a divine assignment. You are God's love letter to somebody. God is calling you to say what others aren't saying, and change is uncomfortable, and we have to be okay with that. 
uh, and not retract from our assignment because it gets uncomfortable. Retract from the people we're called to reach because it gets uncomfortable. Okay, um, we got to say what others aren't saying and willing, you know, to do what others aren't doing. So it's First Samuel seventeen verse uh, forty. All right, it says this. First Samuel seventeen verse forty. Here it is. It goes on and he says, and it says, then he took his staff. It's talking about David. He took his staff. He said something. Dealt with the backlash. Dealt with the accusations. Uh, dealt with the uncomfortableness, dealt with the awkward moment, and he kept moving. You got to learn, if you're going to change your world, you got to learn how to walk into an environment God's put you in, and those there don't think you're called to do it. You got to learn to walk into an environment with God's validation, God's affirmation, and allow the devil to hate all he wants, say what others aren't saying, and keep moving. All right. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch, which he which he had. Um, and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. This is my last point. God is calling you to do what others haven't done. God is calling you to do what others haven't done done okay um and this is what david did we're not going to read the whole story um uh of, we all know what happened uh the giant uh you know got killed david got the victory um and it was a victory not for david it wasn't about david it was about god's people advancing it was about the kingdom of god uh advancing and david changed his world um I was just talking to uh, some of our uh, team and community. We had a little uh, discourse, a little dialogue in between takes of this. And, I, you know, we're just talking about, you know, just um, what is unique about Hopeland Church? What is something where are, are we really living this? So that's what I'm asking. Are we really living this as a church or is it just a cute little vision on, a wa on the wall, right? Uh, we don't even have it on the wall yet, but it's coming. Uh, but, but God has, um, you know, we exist so you can change your world. Well, we as a church and me as a pastor need to be living something like this. And so there are some things that we do do uh, that we're not doing because other people are doing it. Uh, we're doing it because we're called to do it. We're not doing it because there's necessarily been a pattern out there. Uh, just some unique things some of uh, our team was mentioning was um, that in our environments, um, we, we don't um, preach at people, uh, there's times we create environments where we get questions from our community and, and communicate and answer those questions from the platform on Sundays. Where we, we want to um, uh, create environments where we are able to have tough conversations that we haven't really seen. I mean, honestly, uh, other churches do this. It's not like we're following some other model, but we've brought conversations into our gatherings um, that that aren't status quo we've talked emphatically and specifically about sexuality sex abortion um race um we've brought up topics in our gatherings um like you know that aren't uh that are kind of maybe sometimes churches might stay away from them uh but this is something that we we want to change something and so if we as a church are going to change something uh we're gonna we're gonna say what others aren't saying. Um, and uh, we want, and it is possible, and this, I'm gonna go back to this because I talked to it, talked to you about it more on an individual level, but individual level, but as a church, and is, is uh, there's a way to talk about things that are wrong, that are sinful, that are sin without condemning people in the process. And so we, we don't bring these up to demean people that are struggling with these areas, we bring them up because the Bible talks about freedom in the truth of the gospel and he'll deliver us from, from all sin. He'll free us from it all. And so we are called as a church to change our world. And if we're going to do that, we got to be willing to pay the price. Another thing we do as a community we've done that I haven't personally seen others do, I'm not saying these things so to, to kind of 
you know, brag or boast. I'm just saying these are things that I, as I've studied this, I've kind of, I want to put what we're doing through the filter of God's word and, and what we believe we're called to do as a church. And uh, we've um, really connected to the local high school and even had the principal come and we had him on the platform and prayed for him and gave him a small gift. It's just something we, we didn't see anybody else do that. We're just like, we want to create bridges in our community and, and we want to bless our community. That's not something we saw others. We want to do what we're not seeing others do. Um, and we want to do more things in our community, reaching and blessing them. And so, um, so I pray that this message encourages and challenges you. So I just want to pray for everybody right now um, as we close out uh, the word today. Uh, Father, I just uh, pray for everybody that was in earshot of this word. And I pray you begin to make them uncomfortable if they've gotten too comfortable in, in what they're called to change. If they've gotten stagnant or complacent, I pray that by your spirit, Father God, that the, that, that, the, that the status quo would be uncomfortable for them. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would stir them to change something. Stir them by your spirit to change the world. Just as David stepped into this environment and, and, and he had to do something. I pray that everybody in the Hopeland Church community would be stirred to change their world. Would be stirred by the spirit of God to effect change in the environments they are in. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I just wanted to pray for those of you out there that don't know Jesus, have not confessed him as your Lord. We always wanna make sure we take a moment in our gatherings to do this and to invite you to uh, give your life to Jesus. So if that's you, uh, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. And say, Jesus, I come to you as I am. I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I confess you, Jesus, as Lord of my life. I am saved by your grace through faith. Be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. I just wanted to celebrate uh, the whole Hopeland Church family celebrates with you and praying that prayer. And um, that is literally the most important decision in your life you will ever make. And so we as a church community want to help you. We want to give you something. Um, we have a, a seven day devotional. It's a it's a digital devotional. We'll send you the link to that. And, and that's just a way to help you take the next steps in your walk with God. And so if you would like that gift, uh, simply text the word GROW to 323-405-3232. So once again, text the word GROW to 323-405-3232, and we will send you that gift. And so once again, congratulations. Praise God. Um, made the best decision ever. And everybody else out there, Hopeland Church, uh, Crystal Gale and I love you guys. We are gonna be gathering soon. The plan is in place. Uh, by the time you are watching the live broadcast or the initial broadcast of this service, that should already be out um, on social media. You should have seen that. If not, check out our Instagram and, and you'll know exactly the process and the phases of us. Uh, that we will begin our in-person gatherings again. We love you, God bless you, peace. Wow, what a powerful word from Pastor Sean. All right, one of my personal takeaways, uh, he said, we are created to change your world. So you're created to change your world, I'm created to change my world. What does that look like? How do we go back to work and change our world? How do we go back to our neighborhood and change our world? How do we model God's way and really do this, what Pastor Sean was saying? So we can't do it sitting down. We can't do it staying quiet. We have to do action and make this happen. So I love that challenging word. I really appreciate Pastor Sean sharing that with us. I also want to remind you some of the sermon series that we've done in the past. Um, those are still available on our podcast and also on our YouTube. So check those out. 
definitely recommend checking those out. So um, I'm going to segue to uh, tithe and offering. Uh, the verse I'm going to share this week is 2 Corinthians uh, 9 verse 7. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. So we never want you to be pressured to give. We want you to give from your heart. It doesn't matter where you're coming from or who you are. Always, God is always looking at the heart. No matter what season we're in, He's a heart checker. That's the only thing I love about God. It doesn't matter who we are. He's always looking at the heart. It doesn't matter what we try to be. He's always looking at the heart. So we appreciate your giving. We encourage you to continue to do that. We thank you for being uh, faithful in doing that. You're really changing this world around here because of your tithing and offering. So we thank you for that. Um, let's go ahead and also, I forgot, the t uh, you want to text for your tithing and offering, text 777-977. So we thank you again for that. Let me go ahead and pray uh, over the tithing and offering. Dear Lord, we, we just thank you for everyone that's being faithful and giving uh, this week. God, we thank you for everyone that continues to do that. God, I pray you continue to bless their household, continues to meet every need. God, I pray that you continue to just change their world as they are continuing to partner with you and uh, tithe and give to your church. God, we thank you for what they're doing. I pray you continue to bless them and meet every need, God. We thank you. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Have a great week, guys. I feel pressure to be funny. Huh? Silencio en el nombre de Jesucristo. Sal fuera. <laughs> okay, are we ready? All right, no pressure. Ven. Okay. Santo, ven. Ahora. Okay. I don't know.